discussion today is on high school ministry high school ministry one of the things i want to say up front is that high school ministry is done normally primarily by christian teachers who they are with the students but they are too few to tackle the size you know i think there are about 10000 high schools if you start looking for people to visit all of them, we don't have that kind of a number of people. So we require the teachers' involvement plus people like me who are not teachers. Okay, I was 1974, I was a high school teacher, and uh, then I disappeared, never to be a teacher again. But uh, at least I, there's a Christian who I established in a school called my dad who school and dad who started it from scratch, then I disappeared. But generally speaking, I have been a associate who is not a teacher. So for the last many, many years. And actually that, that 1974 is when we started doing high school ministry in this area. That's the whole of Kinagop plus Naibasha area up to Bilgi. We started moving around. That, that time, our first rally was in June 1974. And by the grace of God, you are a part of the continuity of that group which in 1974 we started together. So we've done, we'll be in our two years, it will be 50 years of non stop ministry to high school in what we call the KIT area. KIT stands for KSF Kinagopi Evangelistic Associates team that was allocated by KSF, the region of then Kinagopi was our division which is Zakere, Nyandarwa, Southern Nyandarwa, right up to just before Kalau. And then this Naivasha, Nakuru, all the way to Asgio Gio. We were located this region by KSF. Um, and although the first four years, we did not have a name. We we're just going to high schools, 74 to 78. 1978, we actually decided we better be properly organized. And so we actually went to KSF the quarter and asked for proper letters of recognition. And the, the traveling secretary, those days the CEO was called a traveling secretary, Mr. Ashiruka, wrote letters for us and gave us to fill in the name of the school, introducing the team formally as the representative of KSF in Naivasha areas and southern, southern Yadarwa. That's up now around May 1978. So we've been formally registered with KSF from 1978 to date. I, I hope that helps you to, to get a kind of picture. So I've been involved in, teach, in preaching high school, one place or the other, for the last many years. Um, those who do mathematics can now calculate uh, from 74. Is that, is that 48 years? Am I correct? Like, actually, even before then, when I was in A level, I was still preaching in the schools. I can remember going to Kikuru Day, I can remember going to Karema Gauss, but I was still myself doing A level. I did my form 4 1971. So, from, for the last 50 years, I've been preaching in high school or another, somewhere or other. So, that tells you that what went on. And then, after many, many years, I became, um, about the last 30 years, I've been in SITAM as a member, then after some time I became a deacon, then after some time I became an elder, also secretary to the Council of Elders, which is the highest a non pastor can ever rise in, 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 in SITAM uh, before, before finally retiring, uh, now back to, to just, just a member. So I want you to get right at the beginning that involvement in the church does not stop you involvement being involved in high school. Are we together? Yes. The only thing is, when I'm in church, and for the last number of Sundays, I've been preaching in the Sitam, Sitam churches. The last Sunday I was preaching Sitam Gong, another, the one before then I was in Mombasa, one before then I was in Sitam Bari Road. I'm there, go as a member. But then after that, I, I go to many other areas that, are, that have nothing to do with, with Sitam. So under SITAM, I go as a SITAM member. When I go to high school, I don't mention the name SITAM at all. 
Because the moment you mention the name Sitam, they think you want to establish a church in high school. Are you getting the point? Mm -hmm. So that's why I am a Sitamite, but I don't go as a Sitamite in high schools. And that's why now going at a KSF makes it much easier for me. I was in 1983, 26, I was a national, national chairman of KSF. Then in the United States, I became the chief patron, and I've been chief patron for most of, most of my life. The longest title I've ever, ever heard of KSF. <laughs> because I, I became, I became a, a chief, chief patron in 1991, and I just retired the other day. So I certainly did more than, more than the, about 30 years of being a, a, the, chief, the chief patron. But, so I am wearing two hats. And I always remember which hat I'm wearing. I'm not communicating. So I do not misuse the hat. By the way, since um, Sitama, the people, these are the people come from various churches. Some Anglicans. So when you go to school, you don't tell them you are an Anglican. It's irrelevant and inconsequential. It's not wise. To go telling them I'm an Anglican. Or I'm PAG. Or I'm CKK. Or whatever the other names are in Ibadi. We go to high schools as people that are from various churches, but under Kenya Student Christian Fellowship. KSCF. So my job today, after that introduction, is to cover several things. I'd like to give a bit of history. I also want to give a bit of philosophy of ministry, and then vision of the ministry, and then I'll go to a bit of operational issues, how we actually operate. Then you are going to be given an opportunity to ask questions so that as you now start going to high schools, it will be possible to you have an idea. You can go say, say, I'm coming as a KSF person. Now, if they ask who is KSF, at least you'll have, a, you'll have an idea. By what time must I stop? So that, so that I don't... I have, enough, I have enough information for three hours, but I know you're not, you're not giving me three hours. So when do you want me to stop? I'll stop at one. At one? Yes. By that time, by one o'clock, you'd have allowed questions. Questions after one? Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So, so I think that's, that's important. I don't know whether we are... I sent uh, my friend Devwa my notes, but I can see he doesn't have the equipment to project it. Are, are you projecting the, my notes? Uh, we won't be able to project it. Sorry? We won't be able to project it. Oh, okay. You don't have that facility. So I'll have to talk very well because the good thing about the projector is that if I'm saying run and I'm in run, you can see it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to try to speak very, very well. Um, so the first thing I want to answer the question is why, like we can see, I'm involved in many, many ministries. So the question is, why, for the last 50 years, have I not retired from high school ministry? Why is youth work so important that I, would, I must get involved in it? Why should you, in addition to being an elder or something else, do you still serve the Lord there? Why must you allocate time to minister to the youth? And I think that will be very important. Let me just about mention the biblical youth element is given in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. It says, you and Aaron, that is, no, sorry, Numbers chapter 1, verse 3. You and Aaron are to number by their divisions all the men in Israel, 20 years old and more, who are able to serve in the army. It was according to the Bible, you are a child until the age of? Until the age of? 20. So if you are below 20, you are not to be numbered as an adult. The same thing is repeated in Numbers chapter 1, verse 22. All the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were counted and listed by name, one by one, according to the records of their clans and families. Again, the same thing. 
Repeat the loss of numbers of about the two, verse 11. Because they have not followed me wholeheartedly, not one of them, 20 years old or more, who came up out of Egypt, will see the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Except who? Except Caleb and Joshua. Again, you can see that if you are if you are below 20 years, even if you refuse to go to Canaan, it was assumed your mother is the one who ordered you. So your mother died, but you survived. If you are 19 years, 11 months, and 21 days, you still didn't die. <laughs> but if by the time they left Egypt, you are 20 years and one day, you actually died in the desert. What does that tell you? That an adult cannot use the parents as an excuse. It's not my topic today. But it's important to understand once you are an adult, you cannot say, my mother told me. The Bible is very clear. You must honor your father and mother, but you are not supposed to obey them. You are supposed to honor them. And there's a difference between obey and honor. Below 20, you must obey. After 20, you must honor. That means you can disobey your parents, but with a lot of respect. At no time must you disrespect them. So the people we are talking about are people at a time when they are able to listen. They are able to, to, to understand and they are willing to listen. Once you are an adult, you listen, but with a kichungi, with a sieve, where you are checking whether to believe or, or not. That's one of the reasons why I want to emphasize why I don't retire from it. Look at the Christians in chapter 12. So you're talking about the, the importance of young people. Remember you are created in the days of your youth. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. <laughs> in other words, a time will come when you'll be too old to enjoy, uh, to enjoy anything. The people we are dealing with are the people that are youth. These are people who are before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain. In other words, young people are possibility of incas. That is before you start seeing death as a possibility. By the way, even young people die. But when you reach my age, you think it's nearer. <laughs> I'm not communicating. So when you go to speak to young people, they're always imagining like Mrs. Deborah, <laughs> that one day I have a chance. Now when you talk to her now, she still should think there are possibilities, but she no longer thinks there are too many. Now, there's a difference between the young lady of faith and the mother that is now. So can you see why you must go to school? Because when you speak to old people, <laughs> they say, ah, that's what I see, uncle. Ah, I used to go to See, I tried it. It's a number one. But when you go to a high school boy, he won't do. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot go. Do it. So you can see, we should not fail to preach to old people, but waste a lot of our effort. Am I going to get it? <laughs> Ever heard of this guy who was, who was, who was, who was told? He went, went, for, went for a mission. When he came back, he was asked, how was the mission? Oh, the Lord blessed us. One and a half people got saved. See, one and a half people got saved. <laughs> so he was not debating. What does this guy mean? So because somebody thought there must have been, there must have been, no, he said, he said two and a half people got saved. So they started debating. Oh, so two adults and one child. He said, no, no, he didn't get it. When a grown man gets saved, he only gives a small fraction of his life to the Lord. The rest has been wasted. wasted. When a child gets saved, he gives the whole of his life. <laughs> So, you need to understand, when all people get to the still okay, they go to heaven. But serving the Lord, I'm not, I'm not communicating. So if you, have, if you have people who definitely need to get saved, all of them need to get saved. But where should you concentrate your effort? Yeah. On the younger one, who can give the whole of their life. I'm not communicating. And that's why we will we'll be involved in ministry. You have just had me tell you I preach in churches and uh, other places, but I know very well 
that my concentration should be with young people. In business, we talk about ROI, return on investment. And you always invest your money where there is the highest ROI. Am I communicating? Now you know, between investing in old people and investing in young people, who has the higher ROI? Young people. So it's very important to understand. I'm still answering the question, why should we concentrate on the young people? So the first thing I want to understand is, young people have possibility thinking. Because of that, whatever you tell them, they can try. Let's go on with the, with the portion of scripture. I'm now in verse 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. When the keepers of the house tremble, these old people, describing old age and comparing with young people, old people are the ones where the keepers of the house tremble, when the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few. What are grinders? Teeth. In other words, when they are old, the teeth have a problem. <laughs> and those looking through the window grow dumb. What do you use to look through the window? Eyes. Now, young people, the Bible is telling us, by the time you get old, you are still alive. You are not dead. But your eyes have a problem. Your teeth have a problem. <laughs> Everything has a problem. Now, when you speak with young people, they have physical strength and are able to serve with their strength. Let's be clear. If a church has no youth, are they going to do missions open years running everywhere? No, even if they won't. Connecting those things, you require any child that grows, grows because of young people. So you need to understand that very physical strength of young people makes them way far much better than the old. And what I'm suggesting, by the way, in terms of spirituality and maturity, the old have greater than young. But unfortunately, they sleep with it. Because they can't do much with it. I'm not going to get it. You know, the other day I was invited by, by the Wokesa University, and it was what they call elders' dance, so or the farewell party. And uh, they insisted that because the night party, which will begin at 9, that one not to speak at around 3 a.m. And I told them, 3 a.m., how do I drive back to Nairobi? <laughs> so I started negotiating with the young people that. If we were starting at 9, let me speak at 9, then you can continue with your yeah. party. At that time, Zika was a construction. I pictured myself being lost in those Chinese, and those Chinese were not putting good sign yeah. So I hear it at 2 a.m., I may be totally lost. lost. I negotiated, they said, you know, Brother Nana, if you, come, if you preach any earlier than, than 2, you will spoil the party. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the negotiation as you start telling them, sorry, look for somebody uh, younger. I have a message. They want a message, but my bones. <laughs> I'm not, not actually not that time, it's my sight. When you grow older, you drive in the night. Somebody puts a light in front of you, and for a while you can't see. Does that happen to you? <laughs> Did that happen to you when you were young? No. Even, that somebody, and you're, even when you're pretending to be young, you just need to, the, somebody to fly at night to fly all his light on you and you don't even know where you are going. Now, can you see, I have a message, but my ears are making it difficult for me to, I'm not communicating. So, if somebody of my age gets saved, they can't go to the Jomo Kenyatta at night. <laughs> but if you get a young man, you can send him to Jomo Kenyatta at night. So, I'm not communicating. That's what the word of God is telling us. There is a big difference between people who are old. Physical strength. And so we need to do anything. Do we want the growth of the church of Kenya? Let's concentrate visiting the schools. Because when they graduate out of high school, with that strength, the devil at the owner, Chamute Makuni. Because they are not joking. They are serious. Are you together? But they need help in order for them to know. Verse 4 says, when the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, when men rise up, are the sound of birds. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is, this is uh, these are people when they get old. A small noise at the night, they are awake. I, I used to think, think of my grandfather. Because he used to say, you know, there was somebody who, who was passing around the first clock. And then the second clock, 
cock. You know the one they had no watches. Using a cock. So <coughs> but they asked my grandfather, do you sleep at night or do you listen for cocks? <laughs> <laughs> because when you are young, do you hear? Can you tell a cock second that? Can you tell them? No, no just enjoy your sleep. What that means is during the day, and you have seen it with our you have seen it with our politicians, isn't it? In Parliament, when the talk goes wrong, they are sleeping. Why do you think they sleep? Don't blame them. They never sleep well at night. night. So in the end, your productivity in the day has a problem. So can you do the how the people are describing it? That you need to understand youth. If you are below that five, you are called youth. Youth is never below that five. Some people say 40. So if you have a 40, whether you like it or not, you are not young. <laughs> But youth are said to have an advantage even in their sleeping patterns. And I think it will be important. Um, sleep loss reduces working time ability. And that's what we are, we are learning. Verse, verse 8. When men are afraid of heights. Eh? Are you getting it? An old man, if you tell him to, st to stand here, he starts what to write wood. When you are, oh, I have some grandchildren. When you have them to jump, do they even think twice? No. Now, can you see why it's difficult to be a missionary when you are 70? Because anything you see, you know, there are many, there are many of those things that have to do with risk taking goes down as you grow older. You know, some of it, like when I was young, I was saying, I can eat anything. So you go for a mission field, they give you snakes, you eat. <laughs> now, in my age, I'm very careful before. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I say, let's try next time. Now, you need to understand that if you're a missionary, you must be willing to eat whatever is offered. offered. Now, that's, <laughs> that's what a young person can. And even if it's bad for the stomach, they'll just be here and be okay. <laughs> but when it's an old man, you might have to carry him on a stretcher. And he came for mission, but now he becomes a mission himself. himself. <laughs> now it's very important to understand all that is helping you to see why. And I'm not suggesting we stop preaching to old people, but it means you understand they lower their risk taking ability, therefore, it reduces their ability. And um, and you can go on. Ecclesiastes 11 b says, If cows are full of water, they pour rain upon the earth. Whether a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where it falls, there they will lie. You know, as an old man, wherever he is, he stays there. When you are young, you have no idea. And I've noted that because I, I used to do a job where I was covering about 10 countries. And in the streets of Khartoum, someone told me, hey, Brother Nana, I, I don't know him. Oh, you spoke to us? Like one of them saw me in, in the Khartoum. He said, you spoke to us in Kitty High School. When? 1988. Now, what, is, what are you doing here? I'm the chief accountant of an NGO. And that time I was in Cape Town in South Africa. So, hey, brother, brother. Of course, I have no idea who he is. He says, oh, you can't remember me. I'm from, from Kenyatta University. What are you doing here? I'm doing my master's in, in, in Cape Town. Now, young people, you talk to them now. You have no idea where they will be. By the way, it literally means tomorrow. They are anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. So that you talk to that from two boy, please know you are talking to a missionary to China. Mm -hmm. Although he is only a from two. Am I really getting? Mm -hmm. You have no idea, you know? And these days they have become so digital. They just look for jobs on the internet. Am I right? Mm -hmm. When you are over 70, are there chances you are going? Mm -hmm. Very low. Mm -hmm. So you can see clearly, if we want the gospel to expand, we must concentrate in high schools. At the very worst, in the university. But by the time they're in university, they have already started becoming hardened. Am I right? Yeah, it is high school where they are ready to listen and, and change. And it will be very important that you understand, you understand that. May I say, tell you something that I read? 75% of all people who die saved, God saved before they were 25 years old. Let me repeat. Studies show 
75% of all people that died saved were saved before they were 25. That means all evangelism done had not anybody get saved. Only 25, 25% of the people in the church were saved in old age. 75% were saved before they were 25. What does that tell you? Hey, remember we are preaching to everybody. But they are hardened. Their hearts are hardened. So when you understand that statistic, then it means you must find a way of ensuring that you don't stop. You know, people ask me, you still go to you still go to high school? Yeah! Because I know when I spend my time with all of you in the church, I'm not wasting it. But I know it's not there. it doesn't have a high ROI. I'm not calling it. Yeah, that's what So anybody is an opportunity to go to high school. Another opportunity to be a treasure in the church. And then there is no other treasure. Must choose to go to high school. Am I going to get it? Anybody with an opportunity to be an elder in a church and appropriate to do high school must choose high school. Even simple thinking. Have I convinced you? And this is not a small joke. When the Pastor White asked me to become a deacon in the, in the 1990s, asked me to be a deacon, I just asked, Pastor, are you not aware I don't come to church regularly? Because, of course, I've been preaching. All the, all the years. Sitam is my home church, but I'm, I'm committed to, to student ministry. Ah, he said, Pastor Hoyt was our pastor, our senior pastor, before Sitam became B, when we were called NPC, not the of church. And uh, he told me, oh, John, I'm not stopping you, you must continue preaching. But the deacon boys are not held, on, are not held uh, at the same time when you are preaching. Now he defeated me. That's how I agreed to become a deacon. Because he told me, continue preaching, but be available for the call meeting. What you are after is your management skills. How can they benefit the church? It's very important that I was clear in my mind. In 1970s, I still remember 1977, I became an elder in a, in a church. And um, for two years, 78 up to 79, 80, I was in that church. What would happen is, when I'm allocated okay, duty to count the opening, it happened to be the same day I'm invited in Kenyatta College. That was the university. And I had to make a decision. Do I go to preach in Kenyatta College or count? Money. Of money. <laughs> now I realize, if I say I'm not counting and I'm an elder, it will be an issue for some other citizen. So I can't tell them that. It was such a difficult Then I asked myself, if I don't go to Kenyatta, who will replace me? But in counting, another elder can help me. But you see, if you do it two, three times, people think you are not respecting the pastor. I'm not communicating. That's why when, when many years later, that's when it's now nineties. So I kept out of, of the, I am in church, I will participate, I will tithe, I will do everything, but not take up leadership role. So I can concentrate in high school. So when, when Pastor White came to me, asking me to be a deacon, I told him, I, because of what I have seen earlier, because what happened after two years, in the next election, I went to the pastor and said, please, don't give my name for election. I'm unable to cope with the, cope with the work. Because I had already sensed that God is opening doors among young people. And he has an open door for everyone. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So, he has opened for me, which other voice am I waiting for? That to know the reason why he is opening the door is because he has put a, mere, a message in me for young people. Am I right? So why do I say no to God in order to please the pastor? There's a choice, either to please the pastor or please God. And that's why I made a decision. I will stay with you. In fact, even one of the reasons why I'm in system was because earlier, in smaller churches, the pastor feels very offended. But in system, we are so large that I didn't even think anybody would notice me. Because I go to system to eat. And then what I have gained, I go and give, Others, because I really, Father Otto was a fantastic, fantastic teacher of the world. So I wanted to gain, then I to give. And then, of course, you must belong to a church. It's very important, you yourself, because what are you going to give others? If you yourself are not, busy. you must belong to a church and be faithful there. But now the question we are dealing with is, what happens? You must ensure your involvement in the church does not stop you and wait. That, that, that opportunity. 
in the, in, among young people. And it will be very, very important to understand that. Another thing I could say, please understand that student movement have determined the direction of missions. If you are a student of missiology, studied about mission, almost any revival and mission outreach that has happened was always started by students. In the high school or university, you Google up the Cambridge Seven, who are people, university students in Cambridge, who are very gifted. And there was a revival in Cambridge University, and the Cambridge Seven ended up in every continent of the world. Um, City Start became one of the pioneer missionaries in Congo. We were, they went in China, everywhere. Any student, any major movement of missions always starts with students. And I have read for you in the Bible to understand why the students are the first to answer the call. Did you, can you now understand it? From the Christians, can you see why the students? You know, a student says, we need you in China. What are the possibilities? I might die there. But he has no connection. Other than the mother, he has no wife. Now, so he finds it very easy to go for, and he's a risk taker. Did we see that? Yeah, so that's, that. so every mission we talk about is uh, likely. So missionaries begin as youth members. Even if you see an old man, ask him, when did you become a missionary? He became a missionary when he was young. Very few people in their 50s decide to become missionaries. But if they decide to be missionaries in their 20s, they might still be missionaries in their 70s. But they started only while they are 20s. And I think it will be important to understand, to understand that. We have talked about physical strength. We have talked about um, variability of time and productivity. We have talked about risk taking, which is, which is important. We have talked about um, the fact that they have they have enough time, they are looking forward and are willing to take, to, to make decisions or to help. And then the last thing I want to say is that the youth have passion. They never do anything without measures. When they get into something, they do it the gusto, including taking drugs. Whatever they do, they do it with gusto. So it means that if only you can talk to them early, they will talk things that are going to help them to change the kingdom of, for the kingdom of God. In old age, you no longer have motivation or passion. Young people are passionate and full of energy. That alone can drive them to accomplish things that other people cannot. That is why you need to follow God's purpose especially for the youth. And, that, and, the, and I think that will be important. We have not talked about their flexibility. He can be doing this one moment, then he's doing a different thing. You get in your 50s and you kind of are used to your career. You find it very difficult to be to change, but the young person will change. I hope I have convinced you with that, which was my first question. Why you must belong to a church but still be involved in student ministry? Have I? Yes. Are you convinced? Yes. I just want to introduce KSF to you. First, I want to mention that um, these students in Cambridge are the ones who became missionaries in Kenya. So, when the school started, they also started student clubs or student activities. And therefore, from, from the time school system started in the 1920s, 1020s, there was always some activity among students. But there was nothing coordinated. Each mission station found a way of helping their own students. By 1954, a camp was organized that would bring all students from all mission stations together in 1954. And that is now the first recorded KSF camp. The name KSF had not been decided. But from that time, 1954, there have been regular camps ever since. So that by, in another three, four years, they started asking themselves, instead of working, you do the, you know, we just work without a name. Why can't we organize something and register it with the government as officially the body that's coordinating the work in high school? And so they held the first camp in 1958 at the Goto High School, which is now the Goto College. And that camp is where they made a decision to formally 
register with the, with the Attorney General, with the Registrar of Societies of the Government of Kenya, and we have our registration certificate is 1959. That 1959, they are all volunteers, but they realize everybody has their job. They need somebody who can coordinate the work so that it's work, it's full of volunteers, but someone needs to sit the office to coordinate. And so they got a young graduate called Harry Cotter, who was recruited by Scripture Union in Britain and sent to Kenya to both coordinate Scripture Union work and also be the first uh, general secretary. You know, that time we called him traveling secretary of KSCF, Harry Cotter. I still remember him coming to my high school in 1968 when he, I still remember him in 1968 coming to my high school and talking about the importance of daily power. He remember he was both KSF and Scripture Union. So he would, everywhere he went, he emphasized the importance of systematic daily quiet time. So, similarly, 27 years later, I hope any person who calls himself KSF emphasizes the importance of quiet time. We are suggesting you should not go to morning glory. But one of the marks to your KSM person, you encourage personal quiet time. In other words, there's a place for group meetings, but more important, you, God, and me. Do you meet on a daily basis? Number two, are you covering the Bible from cover to cover? So that we do not encourage the use of daily bread. Because daily bread are very verses. But after you have been having daily bread for 20 years, you still have not read the Bible. Are we together? Mm -hmm. You read a book that goes page by page until the whole Bible is covered. If you use the daily power, it promises that in seven years, of only 20 minutes per day, you have covered the whole Bible. If you use the daily guide, which is six longer passages, it, 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 it will help you in five years, you have covered the whole Bible. It's important to understand. That's, that's one of the things that we got and it's a, a deliverable of KSF. When KSF came in 1970, we used to buy the books. I don't think we do that very much, Brother Dewa. But we used to buy books. And every time we are going to high school, we are going with those ones. So when I bought my first day of power, it was one shilling and 50 cents, 1968. You just save, save your pocket money. I don't know what it is now. It's much more expensive. But I really, as, as people who visit schools, the thing you want to emphasize is every child to learn to talk to God on his own. So that when you live from four and they go to a child that is dull, that has no that has no fire, they themselves will have a fire by talking to God on a daily basis. Are we together? And that's one of the things. Anyway, I don't think I have enough time to talk about that. The, the, the other thing that I can talk about is the name of KSCF, Kenya Student Christian Fellowship. One of the problems we have with it is KSF and CU look like different things. You know, because, because the, 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 the group in the, in the school is called CU. The national body is called KSF. In fact, one time we actually debated it. We should become Kenya Christian Union Fellowship. So that the three cities is not different. Because some people know the CU, but don't know K. But you know they are the same thing. KSF is the one that brings the CUs together. together. But anyway, after some time we realize once the founder has called it KSF, <laughs> changing it will lose the history. But we need to emphasize that the two are the same. KSF and the CU. At one time we also wanted to join to join Scripture Union. Because Scripture Union specializes in providing daily reading materials plus primary school clubs. KSF concentrates on teenagers in high school. Focus Fellowship of Christian Union concentrates on universities. Are we together? So the three of them are dealing with students on a different age. So they are, the three general secretaries are supposed to meet regularly. But at one time we thought, why don't we just create a new name? But at some time we realize sometimes Bringing, making something bigger makes the units suffer. Is that a possibility? Yeah, so we agreed. Let's stay, let's remain in fellowship, but let the, the, the school will concentrate on primary, we concentrate in high school, and they can concentrate on 
on the on, 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 on the on the inverters. But what is the vision of KSCF? The statement reads a generation of raw model Christians having godly values and playing an active and positive role in child society. What are you trying to produce out of every student? You have after a generation of raw model Christians having godly values, playing an active and positive role in church, and playing an active role in society. That's why we exist. So when you see that from one boy, picture him in a few years. What do you want to see in him? Because what you do in your school visit is going to contribute to who he becomes. Are we together? So you need a clarity of vision. You are not looking at a student. You are looking at the next president. You are not looking at a student, you are looking at the next manager. You are not looking at a student, you are looking at the next professor. You must ask, what kind of professor will I want? What kind of president do I want? What do I do now, so that I produce that kind of a person? I'm sure many of us are very dissatisfied with a lot of our adult friends. Am I right? Now, what do you, how do you ensure nobody becomes like your fellow teacher mate in the staff room, who speaks rotten language? rotten uh, uh, things. That's what we need to do. How do we remember vision is the product, what you expect to see. Mission is what you do in order to produce the product. The mission is to lead students in several schools and colleges to come to a personal knowledge of Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In order to get that kind of a president or that kind of a professor we want, number one, to evangelize. Lead them to a personal knowledge of Jesus Christ. So KSL exists to ensure every student has been confronted with the gospel. And that anybody living from four is either saved or a rebel. There should be no in between. Those are people are not rebels. They have never had the gospel. They have not infused it. They simply don't know it. We do not want any student to live from four because they are either saved or they are rebels. They have refused Christ. You know, you can tell somebody that they have refused Christ. But the Christ they know is a Christ of a long dress. Because their grandmother is saved. And she has a long dress. So when you tell, every time you tell the girl get saved, she thinks you're asking her to wear a long yes. dress. It is your responsibility to teach her what being saved actually mm -hmm. is. So that after she knows, if she refuses, you can call her. A rebel. But many people are not rebels because we don't, we don't, we don't uh, have, have that. Number two, mature in him is our work to disciple. The first one is to evangelize them. The second is to mature them or disciple them because some of them are really saved. It's our responsibility that you visit to ensure all spiritual disciplines are covered that can help the person to, to grow. Um, equip them for effective service. Number three, mobilize and empower Christian workers. You will need, even with your students, to start making them know their weaknesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. Prepare them. And I'll be coming to it in a minute. But you want to prepare that student to take responsibility on his fellow classmates. Because you, as a visiting preacher, are there, kind of hit and run. But if that child can be taught how to witness to other students, can you see the impact? It's our responsibility to equip them, not just for their own spiritual nature, but in order for them to be involved in ministry and service. Our motto, as Kelly said, is Jesus Christ of whom we are witnesses. It's taken from Acts chapter 2, verse 32. So I could talk about that generation of role models, having godly values, because that's what we are looking for. We want a president with godly values. And uh, we, we could spend a bit of time uh, on that. We also could talk about playing an active and positive role in church. And that's very, very important to understand. We could also talk about playing an active and positive role as salt and light. We could talk about evangelism, discipleship. We also talk about training. So I was ready to train leaders. And uh, we could go on. 
How do we achieve that? By having associate teams who are volunteers. Nobody pays them anything. You know, other places when you work, like I work for Shell, I was paid per diem. He went for a trip. I came back and he played per diem. In case that I go, <laughs> And, and after I come back, I'm minus money. Now, you need to understand. <laughs> you know, I, I know a lot of my workmates used to say, because I preach quite a lot in the universities, says, Brother, Mr. you are in Matano, yes. Yeah, we can have you in Paul, yes. Who pays? I say, that's why God gave me, gave me a job in Shell. Part of the money is to go to preach to the students. Are, are you serious? They don't pay you anything? I ask them, do you expect students to have money to pay for my bread? That is too expensive. But the money is not mine. It's God's money. money. I'm not going to get it. So that needs to be understood. Don't come here asking. I went, I, I went to preach in my, 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 what is the school called? Malera or whatever you eh? Maregushu. What's my, where is my allowance? Now KSM is a group of volunteers. We call ourselves associates. Why we call associates? Because the student movement, students are the new members. We, we are only associating with them. And we use our own money. In fact, in Kiev, we do not encourage anybody. Even when the, there is money with the treasure, we can't give him nothing. Because the moment you start financing, some people will join for the allowance. You know, somebody has nothing to eat, but he knows if you send him on the, on the trip, you'll get something. That surely, if you want food, tell me to give you food. Don't pretend to go to Preach. That's why we allow everybody to use their own money. If you have no money, come one on one with Nana. Nana, suppose me for that. But it should not be a group expected activity. Because the moment you start being sponsored, there will be people who go as tourists. Hiya, I'm not with Karema. Where are we going? It's not that he wants to preach. <laughs> he wants to see how Karema is. So we, we are a group of associates and volunteers. We all use, we use our own money. That's why from the time, from the beginning, and even when I married Rebecca, we agreed part of our budget is for going to schools. And it can be pretty expensive. You know, I, like, you know next, 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 next week, we, we can go willing. I'm, 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 I'm in Marcelma, I'm in Marcelma University. That will mean, and because I have activities, in, uh, I have activities I'm speaking to the men and women meeting in Valley Road, I'll have to go in the afternoon, fly, because they, their service begins at 8 a.m. in Kakamega. I'll fly and come back. After that, I'll drive to Igaton and come back. But that is part of my pension. Am I communicating? Because mm -hmm. the reason why God arranged for me to get a pension is so that I can continue <laughs> ministry. Am I communicating? Yes. Yeah. Why do you think you get, why do you think Soswan fought so hard for you to get higher salaries as teachers? So that you have more money available for <laughs> ministry. Am I communicating? <laughs> and it will be very important to understand that. So I hope you understand that it's your personal money. He is, you can't say, my work is to go. It is you to give and go. go. And I think that needs to be fully, fully understood. Let me just say something as, I, as I'm looking at this. I've talked about the history. Let me talk about the philosophy of ministry, our philosophy, and I've already started talking about it. Philosophy of ministry. Number one, in our philosophy of ministry, we are a national movement, not a foreign mission or international movement. That's our philosophy. We do not want to become dependent on some American money. KSA, remember, it was started by teachers in high schools in Kenya. Themselves. We all started. That's how KSA started. And up to now, it runs on the teachers and other objects contribution. We have no donor anywhere in the world to run KS. Yeah, I can tell you of the national chairman, 8326. I know sometimes we reach a time and there was no salary for staff. And we pray, and God somehow provides. And after now, that record is runs. It has no money somewhere waiting to be used. If the team here, in addition to, <laughs> in addition to supporting the old trip, 
the battles of take away some money to send to the head. Why do you need the head of this? They are the ones who write the Bible studies, they are the ones who now organize the national convention. If we keep the head of this, we will still be busy doing, but there is no central organization. I'm not going to get it. So in addition to you losing your own money to go to the school, a bit of the money must be sent to the head office. I'm not going to get it. It needs to be in both. Because our philosophy of ministry is that we can operate at our level. If all you can afford, like when I started in 1974, I got a car many, many years later. You just learn how to jump on matatus. If the Lord gives you more money, buy a car. But you don't talk ministry because you have a car. Do you know many people serve the Lord until they get a car? Because as soon as you have a car, you used to go to Gilgil, to Gilgil High School, and it, by matatu it was 200 shillings. Now you put your petrol, and I'm going to ask, it's gone. And the salary is still the same. So you hear people say, oh, I'm busy. What he means is not that he's busy, but it's very expensive. Just leave the car at home, jump onto the matatu. I'm not going to get it. So it's very important to understand. You know people say, if only I had a car, we go. No! It's much more expensive to run a car. It's, if you are not involved before you have a car, it will be harder to be involved when you are. Am I communicating? So it's important to understand. So all that is out of our philosophy. That we run our own ministry, we don't depend on. We are not a mission ministry, right? If you are a navigator or life ministry, they have head offices somewhere which can find them. We, we are local. We are local. We are not a, a department of an international ministry somewhere. And that needs to be fully understood. By the way, the churches, some churches, like Sitam, donate money to the case every quarter. This is all the people I know we, we, we use, because Sitam has a philosophy where part of their money be tied to outside. And KSF is one of the ones that receives the, Tight from from Sita. That money they give that can extend the ministry, but are not done by not being done by Sita. But it's just a donation. It's not that Sita can run KSF. Are we together? Mm -hmm. and, and that needs to be understood. We are not suggesting that someone can give money, but we don't wait for it. If it comes, welcome. If it doesn't, we still continue. What that teaches us is the importance of living within our means. That means, if all you can afford is go by Matatu, you go by Matatu. Everything must ensure they don't incur debt. Operate at the income God has given you. And that will be very important to deal with. Please remember, whoever pays the piper determines the tune. Have you heard of that? So if you are to depend on a church or some American donor, you know within no time, we have to sing their tune, am I right? Mm -hmm. So we are happy, we are poor and happy. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you run your own budget, your own things, it makes you able to listen to God and do what the God is saying rather than fear the donation might be curtailed. Am I communicating? Mm -hmm. And that will be very, very important to understand. Number two. So the first philosophy is we are, we are, we are, we are, we are local, not, uh, we are not a department of... Number two is that we are undenominational. We are by decision. Our philosophy of ministry is we are un... What does that mean? You can never associate us with any particular church. That's why we do not encourage the leadership of any team to be led by a pastor. Because we didn't have time people start thinking, ah, these are sitters. See, the chairman is from sitters. Then this group must be sitters. We encourage the pastor to support us, but the leadership is of lay people who cannot therefore be taken to be the one leading. We are totally un And that's very, very important. Because you can become a denomination by default. In order to achieve that and the ministry of sin, we encourage every member to belong to his domination. We do not encourage church vagabonds. You know church vagabonds? Do you know, do you know such big words? A vagabond is a person of no fixed abode. Is every, where, where are you? Anywhere and everywhere. No. Every KSM person is a native member of his 
church. church. And because he is up in a church, he will not try to convert them into a church. Into a church. And that's, that's our philosophy of ministry. That we will fight you if you want to convert us. And by the way, it has happened. <laughs> I don't know whether Mrs. Deborah will remember, but uh, part of the group I was preaching to that time when she was young, part of them let us stop being active in KSF and I started a church. And that church kind of grounded the work in that area for a number of years. The, the work kind of got grounded. The same thing happened in Kisi, where a the KSF team became the beginning ground for a church. The moment that happened, and the church is PhD was very strong there. And this is a new church began. They said, We are not allowed in our schools. Why? We know what you want. You are coming to get our <laughs> members. So the work of KSF simply grounded. And when I went to Kisumu in 1988, my biggest responsibility was to restart the work in Kisi. I know that before Kisi was divided between Yamea and Kisi, it was one county with more than 300 high schools with nothing happening. Why? Even those trying, they say, no, no, we suspect you. We had to start again from scratch and allow those KSF people who are the church to continue their church and we start again an undenominational fellowship in 1988. And that's why that guy in Sudan, many years later, was remembering my work in Kisi High School. It's a tricky thing. And we need to understand this being undenominational is critical for the future of the ministry. You must not associate the, the KSF team or the CU with anyone. That's why you must check the program. If you are a patron, check the program. See whether the whole time all preachers are coming from one church. church. Even if you claim you are denominational, we can see there are seven speakers all from one church. Are you starting to believe all the people of that church are saved? The others are going to help? No, you must be careful that the students that attend the CU is an denomination. That's our philosophy of ministry. If you are going to be if you are going to be doing anything, that's what you, you need you need to do. So we are we, we think it as important that pastors are critical. But work of pastors to equip us so we can go to the students. So what we mean say is that everybody born again, for you to be an associate or a CEO patron, you must be born again. But you are very reluctant to encourage pastors to be the ones that are CEO patrons or chairman of the team. And I think that that will be important. The next thing is, we are still on this issue of de denomination, how to practice it. We also would like everybody to sign our statement of faith. So, even those of you who have uh, come to join us from church, you need to ask somebody to give you what is the KSF statement of? Yeah. Now that I know the system one, and I know the, the, the KSF one, the major difference, both of them are very, very similar. The major difference is that in Sitam, we are Pentecostals. In, in Sitam, it says, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. KSF, we don't say that. KSF, we believe in the Holy Spirit, but if they are, that last bit of tongues is not in our statement. That means as long as your spirit is filled, we will not ask how many tongues. No. <laughs> All we need is that you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and you believe in the free will, but we will not ask you about tongues. You know, a church is called Pentecostal because they believe in speaking in tongues. But KSF is not Pentecostal. Am I going to get it? And I mean, if I had enough time, I would have told you we are, we are, we are, we are what is called charismatic. KSF is charismatic. What is charismatic? Charismatic is that group of churches that are evangelicals but believe people can be spirit filled and some of them may speak in tongues. But they don't have to speak in that those are charismatic. When I'm in Sita, I say, everybody must speak in tongues. When I'm in KSF, I say, anybody can speak in tongues. Uh, can you see the difference? And it's very important to understand, to understand that. So we need to establish that clearly so that we understand 
what we are talking about. So you ask for the spirit of faith and uh, ensure that anybody who joins the team must sign he has accepted the statement of faith. Our third, um, our third philosophy of ministry is that we are interdenominational. I start by saying we are denominational. Now I'm saying we are interdenominational. How? What do we mean? A denomination means we ourselves don't have a denomination. Denomination means we have a side, everybody belong, belonging to that church. In fact, in the CU, we encourage the students when they go for break, they must go and if they got saved during the time, they must go and identify themselves to the pastor. But at home, we don't choose a church. We just tell them, pick an evangelical church. Are we together? But we don't choose a church for them. So it's very important that you understand, intervention means we recognize the importance of the church, the importance of the pastor, and encourage every student to belong to a church. Of course, we'll tell them a church must believe the Bible. A church, you, you will give them a statement of faith and say, Go and look as your church believes like this. Then that's a church to join. But you do not want to hear of a Christian very active in the CU and during the holidays is not involved in their church. The same thing does also. They must, they must. That's why, for example, in a town, we do not encourage any pre, anybody to be allocated nations. You know, there are about 11 or 12 Sundays in a, in a, in a time. Am I right? No, I've not been a teacher for many years. Um, it is 12. Am I correct to say 12? You should not get more than four of that. You should not, four, not more than four Sundays are you out in the schools. The other ones you go to your own church. Because we are even manager. We governance. You belong to a church. So that's why we need to be many. So that nobody has to be to be sent to a school every Sunday. Am I going to Yeah, so it's important. So we're not suggesting when you join you join KSL, you stop being involved in the ministries of the church. It's only we discourage you being a leader there. Because the week you are out, see the ministry of Sabah in the church, isn't it? Yeah, so we say be involved in the ministry of the church, but don't be there, the leader. Am I clear? That's really, that's what it means by being intervention. We must do things that encourage people to be active in their own church, although we ourselves are not a church. Number four, we are Bible-based rather than person-based. We work in teams. In other words, we do not believe that the chairman of a team has the final word. The Bible has the final word. So we are not a cult based on somebody. That's why, for example, in the constitution of KSL, you cannot be you cannot be in the council for more than nine years. And that's too long. In, me, I did three years, and I thought I was there too long. The constitution changed like later and given longer. People are given longer. But there must be a limit. Because if you stay chairman forever, everybody starts thinking you are the owner. Am I right? <laughs> so it's important, however good you are, hand over to somebody, else. It will be very, very important. So we otherwise you become a cult. KSL in Ibiza becomes associated with you and nobody else. In fact, in KSL kit, we agreed you cannot be chairman for more than how many years? How many Everybody, we say? Two years. We say you can't be there. And the reason they did that is because when we establish ourselves legally in the city of the age, since they are the one who came from Nairobi and was in touch with KSL, this told me you are the one who understands this, become chairman. So chairman, 78. 79 election, they say no. 78, they say no. 82, uh, uh, after five years, I uh, suggested we change the constitution. Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like every election, they will return me. So we made that, we changed the constitution. That nobody will be a leader for, in the same position for more than two years, I done four or five. So I quickly was moved out never to return again. But the, <laughs> the critical thing is, that's what has saved the group. The group is this long because many of the people who are members are actually former chairmen. So when, when the current one can't be proud because he, he also soon joined <laughs> the formers. I'm not worried again. So there's no pride in becoming chairman. Because everybody can be 
Am I communicating? And that way, we remove that idea of a personality cult. Our philosophy of ministry is God has given his gift to various people. Give opportunity for all within the team, within KSF, to operate in their gifts. That's our philosophy, our philosophy of, of ministry. And it will be important that we, we understand. We are Bible-based. Instead of relying on one person, we say, where is that in the Bible? Even if you are a chairman, we will challenge you. Where is that in the Bible? Number five. We made a decision to be a student movement, not a student ministry. A student movement means we are student-based. A student ministry is associate-based. The associates are the owners. Like if you hear of oh, this ministry, that ministry, it's a charging a ministry to the schools. But our own is we believe the students are the best ministers of the gospel. Our work is to equip the students to do ministry. So we are a student movement, not a student ministry. We don't minister to students, we equip them to do ministry. So when you go to us, the biggest deliverable of KSF is LTD. What is LTD? Leadership, Leadership training. Are we together? We used to call it Leader Training Day. We are changing now to Leadership Training Day. What the difference? In the Leader Training Day, we only call committee members. In leadership, everybody is welcome. Because we have no idea next elections, whether the guy who re you left out with honor will become chairman. I'm getting the point. Mm -hmm. So we now train the whole CU. Because the things we are teaching the leaders are not secret. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So, the, and the reason we do that it's because we believe that students, the work belongs to the students, not to the associates. So our work is to equip them to do their own work. And whether we are talking about evangelism or discipleship, the students are the best place to do the work. That's why we can be few and covering many, many schools. And that's why we can be here this time, this time. As long as when you go to a school, your biggest responsibility is not to preach. Your biggest responsibility is to talk to the committee. That means I can be posted in a school and the way we do it, we do it, is that we don't wait to be invited. We have listed all the schools in the region on our register and we allocate each other duties, ensuring every school has one visit per month. But I'm allowing, I'm allowing him to correct me if things have changed. And, uh, and uh, once you allocated the thing, you might go there and find the patron has already invited another speaker. You are okay to sit and listen. Are we together? Because mm -hmm. the real reason you are visiting is to understand how the CU is running. You might discover that when you are there, a cult leader is the one speaking. So if you speak, you will not discover he's cultic, isn't it? So you go and sit on the thing of your computer school, you go and sit and listen. That way, when you meet the committee later, because you will not leave the school before you meet the committee, you will tell them, this and this and this that was said in this by, by the speaker is not in the Bible. You will be careful about the kind of speakers you are. But if you don't listen, will you know? No. no. So we do, not, we do not go as speakers. We go as facilitators. So that, of course, most of the time, we, we will still speak. But in a few places, the person will say, I'm a mountain speaker. You have no problem. You just simply go and listen. And then you write notes. And now that WhatsApp has come, every visit, you must tell, give us the feedback of what is happening here. So that the next speaker goes and tries to help in the area you are pointed out. Number two, the LTD of that week, of that uh, time, will actually tackle the issues that have been raised by your visit. I'm not going to get it. So a school visit, you might preach, you might not preach, but you will listen to what's happening and then put the information on the WhatsApp group so everybody knows. That's what we mean when we say we are a student movement, not a student ministry. Because a student movement, what matters are the students. In other words, even if we are few, that's why, for example, the number of staff in the national office are very few. Because we believe all we need is to equip the students and to do ministry. And when the students are ministering to each other, properly equipped, 
You have heard of P2P? Have you heard of P2P? It is emphasizing this philosophy of peer to peer. That's really one of the, That's why LTD is one of the most important deliverable out of any team. But why does the CEO exist? Because we are talking about we are talking about uh, we are talking about uh, the movement. When we say movement, it means that we want every school in Kenya to have a Christian union. Why does it exist? Number one, it's our fellowship. Because if you stay as individuals, see, see Christians, you are Christians at home, you come, you are still Christian, and you're not meeting. The majority in any school are non Christians. Why right? They could very easily swallow the Christians. So the Christians, the few they are, must be put aside. And the first thing is to get the kind of friends they need. People who are like them. That's why the fellowship is something you must encourage in the CU. What is fellowship? People meeting to know one another, to socialize with one another. It's already a deliverable. It's part of the CU to create a fellowship among, among students. So that will be very important. It's an objective of the CU. Number two, the CU exists in order to evangelize. The same people come together once they have warmed up each other, they start thinking, how can we ensure that every one of our fellow students is confronted with the gospel? If there will be a CU to ensure a, a quick ad policy where everything is touched, nobody leaves that school without being evangelized. We as uh, associates are supposed to equip them to do it, but they are the ones who ensure everybody gets to do it. So you are a fellowship first, then you now evangelize. Thirdly, the CU exists in order to nurture the faith of the believers. So you are fellowship, you are evangelizing, those who evangelize is your responsibility to nurture them. They have what you call follow-up methods of ensuring the new believer is followed up and discipled. But in addition to that, you are also discipling the other Christians to get to know the Lord more. So nurture is a major deliverable. You say you, you want a staff to come from form one and get saved in form one. By the time they leave form four, they are mature in the things of God. They can actually go and become ministers of the gospel. That's what the CU is all about. So you have fellowship, you are evangelizing, you are nurturing. But lastly, the CU exists in order to train people for leadership. It's one of our biggest responsibilities. Of course, it was, more, it was more important in our time than now because there were very few people who used to go to high school, 1960s. Very few people used to go to high school. So you go to high school, and as soon as you go back home in your youth fellowship, you also are a leader. So you want to ensure, not just committee members, but every CU member is equipped with leadership skills. Are we together? And it's a deliverable with the CU. That's why you teach the students. Not one student should become the leader of the fellowship every time. This week is this one, next week is another one, next is another. They are all training and then exercise in that, in that, in that involvement. Even if you are called the civil chairman, it doesn't mean you are the one there all the time. Because your work is facilitating other people to learn what it is you are doing. Are we together? That's really, I hope that helps you if you ask what's the work of a CU. So as you go, that will help. Anyway, philosophy number six. We are spiritual need based rather than invitation based. I already covered that. We don't ask, which school is inviting us? Many ministries, student ministries, rely on invitations. Are we together? But we really don't rely on invitations. The school nobody invites us, we still go. Because we cover geographically. If a school in your area, you must visit. You go there, you find there's no meeting. Only if that's a good discovery, isn't it? Because now you start strategizing how to start a if you wait them for invitation, if they don't exist, would they have ever invited you? No. no. So every geographical area a group is, 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 is allocated. They, their work is to ensure they cover every CU in that area. Not every CU. Every school in that area. That's why where there is no CU, they start one. Where they no patron, they become a patron. Although you are from another school, you can cover three other schools that don't have a Christian teacher because you are covering 
the area. That's very. That, that's that's why we need many more people in it. And uh, number seven, we go for whole student population rather than be club based. A CU is not a club. I know some schools call them clubs, but our philosophy is that we don't want to see you that's a club. You know, a club is a group of people who are interested in a certain thing, isn't it? But a see you should be open to every born again person. And you can't say you are born again and you want fellowship, according to Hebrews 10, 24. Am I right? So the see you should be such that it does not meet in the club day. Because these MCU members are debating club, isn't it? So we you ask them to choose between CU and debating. And debating, they need to be there also. CU, they must be there. So you need to influence your headmaster to ensure that CU meet at a different time from their class. Because we, we are school-based. We, we, are, we are looking at every student, whether Muslim, whether Christian, whatever. We want to minister to the whole school. We therefore need a time when anybody wants can I tell it? Come. Are we together? Yes. And that will be very important. Of course, the many masters will not, will not cover it. But that is the aim. Our philosophy is we are aiming in the school. We don't, in fact, when you come to our LTD, we normally will do what is called penetration analysis. How many people in the school are being born again? Because, because we want everybody to get born again. And we keep checking that number every time to see whether our penetration is getting better. Because we are aiming at everybody. Don't just look at the CU. Oh, I'm the patron of the CU. No, you are patron of the whole school. You are looking at how to reach the whole school. And that would be very important that you, 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 you see and understand. Now, I still want to question time. And I can see not many minutes are remaining. So we have said the CU will evangelize, the CU will nurture or disciple, the CU. Um, let me just say a few things about nurture, um, so that you understand as we as we go this. Let me start with evangelism. If you are saying the CU is to evangelize, then it means you must train people on evangelism. It means you must tell the CU members how to evangelize. But so, if you are visiting a school often, find out whether one of those meetings will not talk about the importance of witnessing and then how to witness. Unfortunately, many of us, we just emphasize the importance of witnessing. We don't tell people how to to do it. But you know, Jesus did not do that. He spent three years with the people teaching them, equipping them. So evangelism, you must of course tell people why they should evangelize. They should also tell them who should evangelize. But you must also teach them how to evangelize. You must teach them friendship evangelism. The importance of a Christian student befriending an unchristian. When I was in the university, we had a statement. With the Christians you socialize, with the non-Christians you evangelize, but you must relate to both. May I repeat? With the Christians you socialize, with the non-Christians you evangelize, but you must relate to both. So you need to teach the students how to be involved in non-Christian without being swallowed by the non-Christian. And that's, 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 that's that. So training will be very important. Number two. Organizing missions where the students can get involved. Like you can organize for you to go with them, witnessing in a particular locality. That way the students are exposed to actual physical witnessing, going out to... So there's the training, there's also the practice by going with them. And they can see how you, you pair up with an associate, they see how you are confronting people, what do you do when they insult you, what do you do when they, they ask questions, it will be important that they physically can see how that is done. Thirdly, give them materials they can use to do evangelism. Are we together? By like trucks. That will be a way of equipping the CU to be evangelized. 
So that's the way to handle the first objective. Why are you going to the school? You are going there to help them and equip them in what is The next one is what we are saying to nurture them. You don't want baby Christians. You want them to mature. How do you do it? Our biggest deliverable is group Bible study. The first one I talked about is quiet time. That's personal. In addition, and quiet time is part of the nature. The next one is group Bible study. You can't claim to be a CU KSF visitor. Go to a school without finding out whether they are doing group Bible study. And whether they are getting guides to do group Bible study. Because we believe that if you put the young people together for a fellowship, they'll talk. But that's not called a group study. That's a nice time. I'm not going to get it. In a Bible study, there must be proper guide with a proper objective. And writing Bible study guides is not everybody's cup of tea. So it's important to look for them, materials they can use in order to study whatever subject you want them to cover for their own nature. And I think that will be that will be important. So in the nature area, there's a quiet time, then there's a group Bible study. But then number three is the issue of speakers who tackle topics. You must teach them how to divide what the, what what theme are they covering that term? What are the kind of topics that can help them to cover that theme? And in the topic, what the topic you mean? You know you go to schools and they invite you and they give you a topic. Come. What do you want me to talk about? Come and talk to us about productivity. That's the end of the letter. Have you been invited in a letter like that? Are you invited in schools? Am I right? The man will just give you a topic, isn't it? Am I right? Yes. Now, the question is, if you say productivity, what does it mean? They don't get you, it is you to think what you mean. I did that one time in a school. So they told me to talk on productivity. I thought they mean witnessing. Because I thought to be a Christian to be productive. It's a bit witness. <laughs> so I went. And um, I have my notes ready. The speaker introduced me. And then, just before I spoke, they asked me to come and pray. And they told me, they, in the prayer, they said, God, help us to help these students not to be lazy. To work hard. So they can do it. Now, I say, I hope the prayer can be longer. <laughs> you see, I have no idea what to say. I am all ready with a different event. It's all productivity. But I think that way back, I keep encouraging the students. If you are not going to explain what the topic is, simply tell somebody, come and speak of the Lord. Please. Yes. A topic without questions is a waste of time. Every time you give a topic, give at least three questions that the speaker is going to answer. It's your responsibility of you as a visitor to teach them how to develop a topic. Every topic, in every topic, there is something specific. Not the answer for the question. The work of the speaker is not to look for the question. It's look for the answers. answers. Unfortunately, we are saying that about students. Even pastors, I receive invitations. And they just give me a topic. What are you coming to talk on? Come and talk about politics in Kenya. Now, that's a, such a wide topic. Unless you give me a few questions, so I can now remember, you are only giving me that a minute. How, how do I cover the, the whole issue about politics? Is that it? <laughs> but you know, in their own mind, they are something specific. They are a But they are hiding it. Am I right? So, it's very important. So, that's part of it. Because if you are able to have a clarity, and by the way, before I forget, that's now for you who are new. Just go to the website of KSF. You guys Google www.ksfkit.org. And you find notes on all the topics I've been talking about. There are notes already there. But if you like reading, don't like reading, go to YouTube. The YouTube has the same name, KSF Kid. And in the YouTube, you hear verbal talk. Now you like listening. All covering all the things I'm talking about. So that you want to read or want to hear, you are catered for. Am I right? That was not possible when I was young. But now we are old enough to, to, to share a few things. So now, of course, the technology was not there. Have you understood? Yes. So over I'm finishing, can you see you can even start all over again, isn't it? Yes. Go and go to the YouTube. Okay, you should go to both. Because the notes are placed in, in the website and the voice is in uh, the voice the voice is in the in the YouTube. So go to YouTube and you see talks on various ways of preparing an associate or preparing a CU patron. 
and you see it's all, it's all covered. We, and we are talking about you need to have a mind, as I go to this school, am I going to be helping with evangelism or am I going to help with nurture? If I'm nurturing, you must teach them the importance of a topic. Take a topic that can help them to grow in their faith. And that will be very, very important. So that's uh, evangelism, that's nurture. The third one we are, we, are, we, are, we are talking about is training them in leadership. And you can talk to them about various issues. That's what you do in LTT. I have, I have to finish so that we allow, we allow questions. Um, we have talked about a lot of things, but I, I think I better finish there by saying four things. And I'm summarizing. Um, because on, on the remaining a few minutes for us to start questioning. Four things in summary. Number one, that youth work has the highest R O I. Are we together? We are not suggesting other ministries are stopped, but it's only wise to know that when you are involved with young people you are involved in something that will have a very high return. Let's be clear. My wife at one time started Bible club in our house. Small, small people who are six years, seven years, I found it very difficult to talk to them. So it's not true that everybody can talk to young people. But there are people who don't find them easy to communicate. Are we together? Mm -hmm. But even a teacher, you are talking to them all the time, am I right? Mm -hmm. So how can you say you, you, are, you don't know how to talk to young people and run your day great by it? Talking to young people. But there are some people, so don't blame people, everybody who is not in youth ministry. There are some who are not equipped to be there. And I think that's what the thing I wanted you to understand clearly and very, very important. Number two, to understand that our, in our philosophy ministry, it will be very, very important that you understand you are not going there to represent your church. You are going there to represent Jesus Christ, but you're also going in the name of KS. Here. So when they ask you where are you from, you don't tell them I'm from Sitam or from Anglican Church or from PAG. You tell them I come from KSCF. That will be important that, that, that you understand. And I hope I've given you reasons as to why. Parents are very, very, very worried about their children being stolen from their church. So it's only fair that, and by the way, they, they think their, their children are being taken by another church. They will come to the school and order the CU to be stopped. Do you, do, do you believe that that can happen? So be wise. That's why you don't go in the middle of If what you are interested in is populating heaven, that's a populating your church. You don't mind people getting saved and not coming to your church but going to heaven. Are we together? Yes. Yeah, so it's very important. And I thought that needs to be very well managed. Number three, that you come ready to use your money. Don't go and come hoping that somebody will finance. Come hoping to use your own money. And of course we have said there are several things. If you don't have the money to drive, you can go by Matatu, isn't it? If you can't go by Matatu, you can ask for them to give you schools where you can walk. Is that possible? Yes. Yeah, so don't save money will stop you being involved. Because even without money, you can get involved. And that will be very, very important because of the philosophy we have where we believe the best person is the one who pays his own fare to go. Because then the, the reason they are going will not be to a reason. It will be because they, they are interested. And my final point is that if truly what you are after is spiritual change, then prayer is of paramount. Don't just go to preach because you know how to. It will be important that your ministry is bad and continued in prayer. Because obviously, you can go and give a fantastic sermon, but I can't do much. I learned that when I went to campus, and there was something they were calling coffee house, in 1974, they were calling it coffee house. And the coffee house was a time when the CEO would throw a party, kind of, for the, for the rest of the university. There would be tea, there would be chocolate, there would be, we used to call them yam yams, these cookies, all kinds of things. So, a lot of non Christians came. So, but the idea was, as they are eating the yam yams, <laughs> you don't remember Jesus. 
So the table I was given, I told them things. And asked all of them, I was only about here, but I allowed them to ask questions. Do you know for some time, they didn't ask questions. Say, any more questions? No. We let you get saved, they all pass into laughter. Because they, they had no intention of getting saved. But do you have any other questions? No. That's when I discovered. People don't get saved because they are convinced. They get saved because they are convicted. Mm -hmm. All a human being can do is convince. All the Holy Spirit can convince. When you learn that, then you do anything you do for ministry must be done in prayer. Are we together? Yes. Because that's really you are not going your name will not accomplish much. So you know, now now the questions can begin. Okay. So maybe you can help organize how the questions will go. I think uh, we can help people raise up.